What's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. It is June 19th and as of today, I am still not back in clinic. Our dean hasn't, give a, hasn't given us a date to even consider or think about going back to clinic. So I don't really know uh, a timeline. I can't tell you guys that, but I can tell you a little bit about some of the changes I know that are going to happen according to the new regulations at the state of Ohio, and I'm sure in all of y'all states, there are gonna be specific dental um, kind of safety protocols with the new COVID and everything like that. So I'm gonna get into those, but first, uh, I've just been hanging out since the beginning of March, basically. Uh, what are you guys doing to fill your time? I have been getting back into learning all about investing. I know I've been living off of student loans for way too long now, but one day I will actually not be in school. I will have a license in something and I will hopefully make some money. So I'm trying to figure out how to not go broke when I make it, how to pay off all these incredible uh, student loans that I'm racking up right now and listening to a bunch of podcasts. Joe Rogan is my current favorite right now. I think he does a really, ju he's just naturally good at uh, continuing conversations and making his guest speakers, which are pretty influential people, just talk about the things that they know a lot about. So if you guys have any tips on how I can kill my boredom, throw them down below. Let me know what you guys are doing. Anyways, let's get on to the 10 changes that I am almost positive we are going to see when I finally get back to clinic. Number one is we are for sure going to have less patients overall allowed in the building at one time. So let's just say if we had 200 patients in the morning, 200 patients in the afternoon, I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to cut that by, I would say honestly, at least 50%. I don't, that so that, that number is just kind of off the top of my head, I don't know, but I would say that we're gonna have to cut the number of patients that we can have in the building dramatically just to follow the social distancing protocols and limit the exposure uh, to potentially harmful bacteria and viruses that a lot of our patients are going to experience. Because before all this shutdown happened, our waiting rooms in the morning and the afternoon were always packed. Like there were probably you know 50 people waiting to be seated and they were right next to each other. People probably weren't happy about it then and I can only imagine that they're not gonna be happy about it now because a lot of our patients, like I'll say over and over, are pretty elderly and not in the best health that they could be systemically. So we gotta really focus on lessening the patients so that they can kind of keep the social distancing rules going. Number two, in order to keep that patient population down, I think that our emergency clinic is going to have to start doing some triages over the phone. I'm pretty sure that's what our dental faculty who is still working at OSU is doing right now. Like I had a patient text me yesterday saying he was in some sort of pain, can I come in? And I was like, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not even in the state. None of our students are allowed to work on anyone, but I'll give you the number to our uh, clinic and so you can call and hopefully get in touch with one of my faculty members that can kind of ask you all the basic questions that we would do in a triage exam kind of in uh, at school or on campus. So we can kind of eliminate those people that were coming in and, and didn't really need to come in. Triage over the phone, if they do have a true dental emergency, then probably that next day they can come in. Number three, any patient that comes is going to have to come to the clinic alone. And I know this is going to be a problem for some of our older patients and younger patients who need transportation to and from uh, from our clinics. And normally that family member or whoever it is just waits in the waiting room. But because of all the social distancing rules, that's not going to work. So they can either get dropped off or they'll have to take Uber, which is another expense and a lot of our patients are coming to the clinic to save money. I, I don't know, it'll be interesting. I know that it will probably uh, lose us some patients who aren't able to make the arrangements to come alone, um, but that's just kinda one of the things we're gonna have to deal with. And number four, we are going to have to take the temperature of every patient at the beginning of every appointment just to check for symptoms of any uh, virus that they might have. So I don't think that's going to annoy very many people and it'll only take, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds at the beginning of an appointment, so that's not a big deal, but something that we're gonna have to do going forward that we never did the previous couple of years in clinic. 
Number five, and a huge reason why we aren't actually in clinic sooner or right now is the new PPE or personal protective equipment. I know that N95 masks are going to be mandatory for any operative procedure. I don't know if they're gonna be mandatory. I, would, I think they are going to be for any procedure like dentures, even though you're not um, drilling on anyone. I think we're still gonna have to wear those. We got, we were supposed to go into campus and get fitted for N N95 masks so that they have a tight seal around our mouse. I think they had small, medium, large, extra large, uh, but we'll see how that is in the future. Face masks, I'm also not sure if we're gonna be requiring face masks for operative procedures like uh, fillings and crowns and implants and things like that. I would imagine, yes, that we are going to have to use those. It's just another layer of protection for us and our patients. And other than that, I don't think our gowns are gonna have to change, our gloves shouldn't have to change, all of that should remain pretty standard. But right now it's just difficult for our school to get enough of that PPE for us to continue clinic and have kind of like that stockpile so we don't run out. I know one of their requirements that they've told us about, our dean said, we're not allowed to start clinic until they get enough PPE to keep us in clinic for the next year or two years. It's not something that they can get a month supply of PPE and then we go back for a month and then we have to stop because we ran out. So we are waiting for OSU to find the manufacturer or, or supplier to supply us for uh, indefinitely, basically. Number six is going to be where we actually do our procedures. So we have, at OSU, we have two clinic floors. The second floor, I believe, and normally we kind of just all mix, uh, they're like uh, in one, on one floor, there could be uh, a filling, um, a crown going on, uh, dentures going on, a patient, like a new patient intake appointment. Um, all, so all the types of procedures would be mixed on that floor. I think going forward on our second floor, we're gonna move all of our operative procedures. So anything that involves a drill that can potentially fling these virus particles uh, everywhere, those are all gonna be on one floor. And then all of the non-operating um, appointments, so like new, point, new patient appointments where we're kind of just, it's the patient's first time at the College of Dentistry and we're just asking them questions, kind of filling out forms, maybe going to get x-rays. That's all gonna be on one floor so that they, those patients can limit their uh, exposure even further to not being around any sort of procedures. Number seven kind of goes along with splitting up the procedures on different floors. Anytime on our second floor that we do have dental procedures, I believe we're gonna require an assistant and that assistant is going to have to use a high volume evacuator, which just is like the suction that we use. It's gonna have to be a really good one, uh, probably special hoses to make sure it's collecting as much uh, like saliva and debris that could get flung into the air into the tubing and I'm sure it's gonna go get sanitized somewhere, I don't know. But I do know that they are making modifications to our operatories to fit into the current regulations and that's something that we've never had before. Uh, when Before when I was doing a filling, I could have one of my friends assist me but I know most of the time they're always busy so we kinda just do things on our own. I'm pretty sure that it's gonna be mandatory that we have an assistant which means that if you don't have a patient that day instead of being able to go home and go work out or go study for something, you probably have to stay at the college and make sure everyone that currently has a patient has an assistant. So it could make for a few long days, but at the end of the day, I think that's fine. It's always a learning experience when you assist and you can help them out and um, you'll just be better prepared and more, more things to learn when you're around more appointments. Number eight, and even going along further with kind of all the operatory setups, I think our operatories are gonna have these huge plastic shields that go in between them, kind of like, I don't know if they're gonna be a full, fully encased, kind of all four walls are gonna be enclosed, or if it's just three and it's gonna go up higher, almost all the way to the ceiling. Uh, I think our school sh emailed us some 3D renderings. I was trying to find it to throw up a screenshot, but I couldn't at the moment. Uh, if I can find one by the time I'm editing, I'll, I'll throw that in there. But I know this is gonna delay us because we are getting a brand new clinic and they had all these operatories made, but then this whole thing happened and they had to make changes to those operatories. So I am not sure if the construction time for those is gonna delay us even further. I hope not, but that's uh, TBD. 
All right, so number nine and 10, these are purely speculative. On um, those previous eight, I, I kind of knew, I looked up some of the new regulations that were going on and I'm almost positive that those are gonna be the changes that we have to do as well, but these last two aren't. These are just what I'm, I'm thinking is gonna happen or hoping is gonna happen. The first one is about our graduation requirements, which is a huge deal. So like I've explained in some of my previous videos, we have certain graduation requirements, um, like numbers of procedures that we have to do before we are eligible to take our final licensing exam and be able to graduate dental school. So that's like, I think we have to do 70 fillings, uh, 10 crowns, seven arches of uh, dentures, a couple uh, partial dentures and stuff like that. We're not gonna be able to do that. We've missed so much time, so four months or three months right as of right now um of like prime time clinic time where <laughs> prime time clinic prime time clinic appointments that were going to set us up to be able to deliver all of those arches and um fpds and stuff like that but we just missed out on it so there there's no way that they can keep all of those requirements the same and have us all graduate on time. If if they keep them the same, I'm not joking, I think probably five or 10 people in my class of 110 would graduate on time. So I really, really hope our Dean and the Ohio Dental Board is making the appropriate kind of uh, adjustment to those numbers. And I'm absolutely not for graduating any of my class unprepared. I, I, I don't want to practice unprepared. I don't want a, a whole fleet of new young dentists out there not having the experience that they need. But I think if we could go off of competencies, so instead of having um, to do 70 fillings, let's bump that number down to maybe 40 fillings and have us pass a competency and have that competency be, be very strict. So that uh, fa dental faculty has to let us do it completely on our own. And if we do, if we show competency that we are capable of doing like a, an amalgam filling or a composite filling on our own, class two, class three, whatever it is, um, let us pass. Don't make us do that extra 30 just as busy work because we're not gonna have time and that's going to cause a whole mess of problems. Like we're, uh, we'd be stuck in clinic, we'd be paying more tuition, the classes behind us would get backed up because we, then you would have three classes trying to see patients as opposed to two, how it is right now. Anyways, a whole mess of problems that would come from keeping the requirements the same. I'm not sure exactly how much you can drop those numbers because we do need to be trained and have experience and get ready to see actual patients on our own. But there is something that needs to be done and I'll keep you guys posted on that because I'm going. that's gonna be one of my main areas of focus or what I'm most paying attention to when I go back. And the last thing that I believe is going to change when we go back is before, since we've taken three months break as of right now, who knows how long it's gonna be, they, none of us have picked up a drill in that time. So we've kind of lost a lot of our hand skills, I'm sure. So I'd imagine they are going to make us go back to our preclinic lab and drill on plastic teeth for a week or two to kind of get back in, uh, in the habit, develop our fine motor skills with our fingers to make sure we're not going in, seeing a patient and doing a procedure that we haven't done in a few months, and which I'm not mad at, mad at at all. It's been a long time since I've done a crown prep. I wouldn't mind going back into preclinic, busting out a couple of those. I hope they don't test us again. That would be really annoying to have to go back through a practical. You guys know how stressful they are. I don't see them doing that. I think they'll probably say like, hey, do five crown preps, um, do four class ones, three class twos, you know, like just do different um, different procedures and get our, uh, our skills back up to an acceptable level so we can feel confident when we're treating actual patients. So that's it for this video. If you guys have any questions, throw them down below, or if you're current dental students right now, let me know if any of these changes that I've mentioned you guys know are gonna happen at your school or what changes you guys think uh, or you want to happen moving forward. Anyways, all I can say is good luck to all the pre-dental students out there. Good luck to all the dental students out there. And I will see you guys in the next video.